Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Oncology Data Advisor Fellows Forum. Uh, today, I'm joined again by Dr. Hadfield, and we are going to have a special edition where we discuss Take Your Loved One to a Doctor Day. Welcome, Dr. Hadfield. Dr. Karaf, it's always a pleasure to, to see and talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. So as Dr. Hadfield and I were reflecting on the importance of this topic, we really felt that as practicing clinical oncologists, we really need to emphasize the importance of screening for the most common and sometimes even least common conditions uh, in terms of cancer. To that end, we're going to share some experiences today that have really affected us personally. Um, I wanted to focus on uh, two cases that I've seen in the past year of practice or so, one related to lung cancer screening and another related to colorectal screening. The first case regarding lung cancer screening, I think is super important because the field has been having an ongoing discussion on why uptake of this screening modality with low-dose CT scan for those who qualify by various guidelines remains so low, even in this country. In some estimates, less than 10% of the total population is screened who are eligible, and in some states, it's less than 1%. So really, there's a lot of inroads we have to go there. And when I reflect on some patients I've seen recently with lung cancers that are related to tobacco use or who have a heavy family history of lung cancer, all of these folks would have qualified for screening. And they ask, why didn't I know about this? Or why didn't I receive the screening? And I think it's so important for us as providers, but also for folks in the com uh, community, whether they be patients or patient advocates, to be aware of the modality for lung cancer screening and really recommend that annual low-dose CT scan, which has been shown to actually increase the detection of these early stage lung cancers, where we know that disease can be cured potentially. So um, to that end, I'd like to shift gears and let Dr. Hadfield share some reflections on his recent cases as well. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And I, I think um, cancer screenings in general, no matter what tests we have available, I, I think we would both agree that we're, we're still not doing a good enough job in, in this country or, or in the world at, at, at reaching every single patient uh, who could uh, be eligible for cancer screening. And, and um, I was thinking about this, uh, you know, particularly in the context of I, uh, I saw a patient today uh, with metastatic breast cancer on an early phase clinical trial. And um, she was telling me a bit about, or to be evaluated for a trial, and, and she was telling me a bit about her story. Um, and this was discovered on a routine mammogram originally, and then she she got standard of care treatment, and unfortunately had a, a, a recent relapse. But um, you do hear these stories all the time of of you know, I think a lot of patients that I've talked to, you know, are a little hesitant to get cancer screening done. But I mean, it really can lead to to uh, discovering cancers early on and, and and make a big difference in the treatment. Um, and, and I think. You know, when I was looking through the statistics today, uh, 30 to 40 percent of women are still not getting uh, mammograms uh, as recommended starting at age 40. Um, and it's something that really, you know, as a patient, you should advocate or in, in this conversation, uh, your loved one. You know, I, um, oftentimes someone saying their own experience of getting a, a test done, um, easing the anxiety for another uh person to consider getting done themselves and then be your biggest advocate with your your primary care physicians and, and your OBGYNs and things like that because um you know if you, if you if you are unaware of the screening but you know vaguely what what's available um you really need to engage with your physicians and try and make sure that you're you're advocating for yourself as well and your loved ones I, I really liked the phrase you just said there, be your biggest advocate. You know, when we go through medical school and our other health professions training, we're taught to advocate for our patients, but at the end of the day, you have to advocate for yourself. And that's why I'm so glad that a lot of patients and other caregivers will be participating in this conversation today. I wanted to close off the conversation by sharing a second case that recently came up in practice, and this is related to colorectal cancer screening. Um, these are uh, like mammography in the U.S. with uh, more accepted uptake, um, but still not near 100% or even close to that, unfortunately. And it's really important to really make sure that we understand that this is a moving target. We recently had this monumental shift in guidelines where colonoscopies were recommended as screening modalities for colorectal cancer from age 50 now down to age 45. And that's been really uh, influential in society and making sure folks are staying up to date. But even more exciting in recent months, we've had the FDA approval of a blood test, which can actually be used to see if there is any fragments of DNA related to colorectal cancer um, in your blood. So this is just another modality that patients and caregivers can advocate for when they Thinking about colorectal screening, and you don't have to worry about things like anesthesia or taking laxatives overnight, worrying about getting dizzy. It's just a blood test. So super critical that we really pay attention to this, both from the provider standpoint where we are in the clinical room, but also in the community. We have to make sure that folks are aware of these modalities and really leading to their uptake to prevent as much cancer as humanly possible.
No, absolutely. It's so, it's so great that you touched on that, that new FDA approval. And I, I think the adage that I uh, have heard throughout all of my training and, and, and time in medicine is that the best colorectal cancer screening test is the one that you actually will take. So, you know, the one that you'll actually do. Um, so we can get in the nuances of all the different ways to test for colorectal cancer and screen for colorectal cancer. But at the end of the day, um, any screening is better than no screening. And uh, it's important that patients know about that. Love that final word. Um, and I'll just add a pledge. Uh, I think this is the first time we've done this on this podcast, but I'm happy to start today. I pledge to take my mom to her primary care physician after this to make sure she gets her screening. Do you have a pledge, Dr. Hatfield? I pledge to continue uh, advocating. My uh, Both my parents and my in-laws are, are very much uh, up to date on their col uh, uh, colorectal cancer screenings and mammograms um, because I, I force them to. So I pledge to continue being annoying to my, uh, my loved ones because I love them so much. I, I think I heard advocating instead of annoying, but I loved it regardless. Thank you very much, Dr. Hatfield. It's all just, it's all just you know, the, the, the phrasing. But yeah, I, 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 it's important. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you all very much for tuning in today for this very special podcast. Make sure you take your loved one to the doctor. Thank you.